Hello my lovelies! It is time for another massive bookish unboxing, so stay tuned. So as you can see here, I have a lot of boxes that need to be unboxed. <laughs> I have eight unplugged book boxes and three books that matter boxes. Yeah. <laughs> It's quite a bit. Uh, so I'm going to move these over to this uh, end table here and bring you closer so I can show you close up what everything looks like. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to dig right in. Okay, so I figured I'd start with these three uh, books that matter boxes. If I remember correctly, these are like YA and adult feminist uh, book boxes and I had another subscription through them as well I don't know what happened with that I'm gonna have to contact them because I'm pretty sure I didn't get all my boxes yeah <laughs> so I think that was called Brave Girls Book Club but let me go ahead and do these and maybe the others will show up eventually they tend to take because they're coming from the UK and just this company this entire year, I'd say they take, I don't know, three to four months to get to you. So they're really, really behind. Or at least that's how long it's taking to get my boxes. Okay, so opening up this first box looks like so. So opening up the tissue, looks like this. Okay, so the first book, I think there might be two in here, uh, is His Only Wife by Peace Adzo Medi. And this is a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. Let's see, this says, in one of the most talked about and hilarious debuts of the year, Afi Tekbul, a bright young seamstress from a small town in Ghana, is convinced by her family to marry a man she has never met. Akeem Gano is a wealthy businessman whose family has chosen Afi in the hope that she will distract him from a relationship with another woman they think is inappropriate. The fact that she doesn't know Akeem seems a small price to pay for a marriage that offers her family financial security and provides the key to a lifestyle she has always wanted. But when Afi arrives in Accra, Ghana's gleaming capital, she realizes her fairy tale ending might not be all she had hoped for. His Only Wife is a life-affirming, must-read novel about a young woman's search for independence in a man's world and the rules she just might have to break along the way. And then we have our little pamphlet here. It says books that matter. Uh, it tells about what's in the box. Thing about the author. Books That Matter recommends. Uh, there's another like interview with an author. There's a little poem. It's a Books That Matter poem of the month. And then, yeah. Okay, what do we have? We have a bookmark that says Hot Book Summer. And it looks like so. And then the other book, I think this is a book. I, 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 Ayla? I don't know. Hold on, let me look and see what this is exactly. Okay, this is the summer edition of Ayla Magazine. Revolving around the theme of what is a hot girl summer, this edition challenges the societal expectations and pressures put on women and women's bodies during the summertime. It says, we absolutely love this illustrated magazine's ethos of empowering, educating, and encouraging women to be their best selves. A message we hope is echoed throughout the whole box. Okay. I mean, this does look super cute, too. Alright. Oh, next up we have a face mask. And it matches the back of the bookmark. Cute. We have a Westford Mill Organic Cotton Mini Mesh Grocery Bag. And I'm not going to pull it out because I might actually give this to somebody. But yeah. And then one last thing in here is Bloom Blossom Spritzy Toes Revitalizing Leg and Foot Spray. It's lime oil and aloe vera leaf juice. 
Okay. <laughs> interesting all right so that's everything in that box next up we have this books that matter box okay opening this one up looks like this it says and i think this is the newest box because i think they just recently changed their packaging uh, this says books that inspire inform engage expand empower surprise enlighten amplify educate explore comfort challenge Enchant, disrupt, captivate, influence, uplift, illuminate, interrogate, question, testify, intersect, include, represent, matter. And opening it up looks like so. Okay, so the book we have here is How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbu. And this says, set in the fictional African village of Kosawa, this is the story of a people living in fear amidst, amidst environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Pipeline spills have rendered farmlands infertile. Children are dying from drinking toxic water. Promises of clean up and financial reparations are made and broken. Left with few choices, the people of Kosawa decide to fight back, but will it come at a steep price, one which generation after generation will have to pay? How, we, how Beautiful We Were is a masterful exploration of what happens when the reckless drive for profit, coupled with the ghost of colonialism, comes up against one community's determination to hold on to its ancestral land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of her people's freedom. And then we have the little pamphlet with all the same kind of stuff as the other one. Oh, there's a article on books for change and plant-based eating. We have like another tiny little book thing by Aja Barber. This is Consumed. The need for collective change, colonialism, climate change, and consumerism. And it says, in the learning first half of the book, Barbara exposes you to the endemic injustices in our consumer industries and the uncomfortable history of the textile industry, one which brokered slavery, racism, and today's wealthy inequality, and how these oppressive systems have bled into the fashion industry and its lack of diversity and equality. She will also reveal how we spend our money and whose pockets it goes into and whose it doesn't. Clue, the people who do the actual work. And will tell her story of how she came to learn the truth. In the second unlearning half of this book, she will help you to understand the uncomfortable truth behind why you consume the way you do. She asks you to confront the sense of lack you have, the feeling that you are never quite enough, and the reasons why you fill the aching void when consumption rather than compassion. And she makes you challenge this power disparity and take back ownership of it. The less you buy into the consumer culture, the more power you have. Okay. It's very, very short. Literally 17 pages. Okay, then we have some reusable cotton pads. A set of three facial pads made with organic cotton. Okay, cool. That's nice. Hmm. I might give this with this to the same person. I have something in mind. Uh, then we've got some tea, Hibiscus Tulsi Elderberry Tea by Kib. Oops. A bookmark that says, Destroy the Patriarchy, Not the Planet. Back looks like that. Ooh, chocolate. A uh, hip, creamy and smooth oat milk chocolate. I might have to have some of this tomorrow. I can't have it today, though. I'm like watching my calories and stuff so gotta save this for later and then the last thing in the box here we have this scents natural lip balm so it looks like so all right okay that's everything in that box all right now the last books that matter box this one looks like so Ta -da. Okay, so the book is Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. Let 
Looks like that on the inside. There's a back. Oh, the back looks like. The back looks like that. And it is a yellow book. Okay, this says Alice, a novelist, meets Felix, who works in a warehouse, and asks him if he'd like to travel to Rome with her. In Dublin, her best friend Aline is getting over a breakup and slips back into flirting with Simon, a man she has known since childhood. childhood. Alex, Felix, Aline, and Simon are still young, but life is catching up with them. They desire each other, they delude each other, they worry about sex and friendship and the world they live in. They are standing in the last lighted room before the darkness, bearing witness to something. Will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world? We got some more candy. These are Daisy and Dam buttons. Dark chocolate buttons. They're 70% cacao. Looks like that. Again, those are going to have to wait. <laughs> And it looks like we have another treat here. These are my sweet chickpeas, dark chocolate roasted chickpeas. They're plant-based protein, vegan and gluten-free. It's a decent sized bag, cool. And then we have a tote, what does this say? Beautiful world, where are you, Sally Rooney? And a bookmark. Oh, wait. There's actually two bookmarks. Let's see. They both say the same thing. At times, I think of human relationships as something soft like sand or water, and by pouring them into a particular vessel, we give them shape. And it is a quote from the book. We have the little pamphlet, which shows all that stuff. There's a thing about creating a cultural moment. There's a thing about the characters reading list. So I guess they're like reading stuff in the book. Uh, Rooney recommends. Oh yeah, it's talking about their glow up. So it's talk this is a box that came right before the other box. And another poem. And then we've got stuff about the companies. Yeah and a print here okay so those are all of the books that matter boxes and now i have eight unplugged book boxes so these are ya some of them are ya some of them are adult i won't really know which until i open them they used to have like all the ya's were one color like their box and all the adults were a different color like this one's green and this one's black but I have green and black and purple I think those are all the colors so I don't know I don't know <laughs> I don't know which one's which and again these are in no particular order all right so let's open up this first box here looks like so oh this is actually the newest box I think uh, this, or the newest adult one. The theme is Cozy Nights, and this is the November 2021 box. So we have a little pamphlet here. It tells us about the stuff in the box. It also has our photo challenge, cozy journal prompts, and an apple cider mule recipe. And then on the back, it shows a sneak peek for the next month's box. Okay, there is something super tightly, like, vacuum sealed. I'm very curious what this is. I feel like I'm going to go to cut it open and it's just going <laughs> to blow up on me. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's a blanket. <laughs> Tied up with a ribbon. It's so soft. Okay, let me see if I can show this blanket to you. I think you can see most of it here. It's a Phantom of the Opera inspired blanket. I was trying to show it off without moving the camera so I didn't have to try to fix it back. All right, then we've got a candle. Autumn at Lollybrook. Glazed caramel cakes, spiced wine, and warm oak. Oh, this is gonna smell so good. This is inspired by Outlander. It took me a second. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yes. 
Oh, it smells so good. It smells like fall and sweet things. Anyway, looks like this. Okay, then we've got Reading by the Fire Pumpkin Cinnamon Books. Mini Pumpkin pop Potpourri. Pour potpourri pumpkins into a decorative dish and leave out. How cute. They're like little tiny pumpkins. This smells quite nice. Then we have, let me see if I can get close enough. This is a little magnetic bookmark. It's very cute. Something heavy in a box. Okay, these are awesome. So there are two uh, like stone kind of coasters and they have like little pads on the bottom. And it says that one is from the Starless Sea and one is from the Night Circus. So this one says, uh, I'm guessing this is the Starless Sea because it has like a B on it. So strange, isn't it, to love a book? Very cool. And this one says, looking for looking forward will be better than looking back. And again, I would think this one's the night circus because of the tents. These are awesome. These will definitely get some use. I'll put the one about the book on my desk and the other one on Marty's desk. Okay, then we have this Alexandrian Society Lip Scrub Books and Cinnamon. And it comes in a little jar like this. That's an interesting smell. It looks a little... <laughs> yeah. Not really sure what happened there. I guess it's just what happened in shipping. Okay. Then we have our book. Which is wrapped up. So in the adult boxes we get paperbacks and in the YA boxes we get hardcovers. Okay, this is The Secret Next Door by Rebecca Taylor. It's the perfect neighborhood filled with not so perfect people. Allison Tinsdale is giving her son the childhood she never had. A stable family, a loving home, and a great school in a safe neighborhood. When they move into the home of her dreams in one of Denver's most sought after developments, Allison works hard to fit in and impress the other mothers. Bonnie Sloan is the neighborhood ma matriarch. With her oldest son headed to Yale and her youngest starting kindergarten, Bonnie is now pursuing her long held political aspirations. But it's her middle child, Elijah, and their private family struggles that cast a shadow over her plans. When the open space behind some of the most expensive homes gets slated for development into a golf amusement facility, the neighborhood becomes deeply divided. The personal pressures and community conflicts ratchet with every passing day, but it's when a 13-year-old boy is found dead beside the lake that simmering tensions boil over into panic. Gossip flows, lies are exposed, and accusations are made as cracks run through the community's once solid foundations. The neighborhood's faith in exterior appearances it is eclipsed by the secrets every house keeps. Rebecca Taylor, author, author of Her Perfect Life, returns with this fast-paced and grossing novel that reminds us that nothing is ever as perfect as it seems. All right. Oh, and we have a signed book plate and a letter from the author. So I'm going to read the letter from the author, but I think in the future ones, instead of reading the back of the book as well, I'll just read the letter from the author. This says, Dear Reader, I wanted to say hello and let you know how excited I am for the opportunity to place my new book, The Secret Next Door, in this month's Unplugged Book Box. Their emphasis on self-care, unplugging, and living in the moment are all intentions that I too tr have tried to embrace more this past year. Personally, I've made some huge life changes in the past six months and finding the time to nurture my whole self has become a priority. My wish is for this box to help you find some joy and take some space for yourself. I'm so honored to be a small part of that for you. Now, a little about myself and the inspiration behind The Secret Next Door. When people ask where I'm from, I often explain that because I grew up in a military family, I'm not really from any one place, but I have chosen to call Colorado at my home for the last 30 years. I've had the opportunity to visit and live in many places around the world. 
Still, this beautiful state is where I finally put down roots and raised a family of my own in a suburb just outside of Denver. So it's probably not surprising that my latest book is set in a Denver suburb. Some frequently touted writing advice is to write what you know. While I know families, neighborhoods, parenting, and many of the assorted cross currents and conflicts that can erupt from these relationships and within these environments. I choose to set this book in Colorado because the backdrop of those maj majestic mountains is an inspiring view we both love and might fight to preserve. When looking for a hot collision point in which to begin The Secret Next Door, it turns out I didn't need to look any further than my own backyard. When tempers flared over the construction of a top golf facility just west of our neighborhood on a plot of land that would obstruct the mountain view of many homes, some of my neighbors were very upset. Very. In The Secret Next Door, the enclave and its residents are pure fiction, but I admit that watching the genuine conflict ignite when, within my own neighborhood planted the seeds for it. As a result, I hope you will experience a page-turning domestic suspense that will entertain and leave you unable to put the book down until the very last surprising page. All my best, Rebecca Taylor. Okay, so that is everything in that box. Let me get the next box open and I'll show it to you. Okay, next up. This is the November 2021 Young Adult Box and the theme is Illuminate. Okay, I just had to pause for a second to take a picture of something in the box while it was still in the box because there's an item here that is damaged. It looks like it was cut and it also looks torn. I don't know what happened to it. It had to have happened before it went in the box because the box isn't cut or anything. So I took some pictures so I could send it to uh, Unplugged and maybe they'll send me a replacement. Okay, so as you might have seen, we have some more of the, the popcorn, not popcorn, uh, pumpkin potpourri. I think it's the same scent. Yeah, see there's a candle in here too. House Wraith, sugared crimson pear, cannoli cream, and maple sugar. Oh, that sounds amazing. And House Wraith, that sounds familiar. Oh, Kingdom of the Wicked candle. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. That cannoli cream. Oh, it does. It sound. It smells like sugar. Oh, sweet, and yummy, and delicious. Has a tiny little wood wick on it. And I'm sad about this because it's a Gilmore Girls inspired book sleeve. It says, I live in two worlds. One is a world of books. I freaking love this so much. I'm so sad that it's damaged. I'm going to set that aside for now. Okay, then we have something in this box here. Felix Love. Spice Florals and Pear. Oh, it's uh, Soap Bar. Oh, this smells so good. It's just a plain bar, but oh, it smells amazing. I like getting the, the soaps from them. They're, they're usually either really smelly good or really pretty or both. <laughs> and I actually do use them. We have the book, but there's some other thing behind the book here. Oh, I love it. But I don't know that I could use it. I wouldn't want to mess it up. Okay, it's a cutting board. But, like, burned into it or etched into it is the world map from uh, the From Blood and Ash series. So we have the Kingdom of Solace, the Kingdom of Atlantia. Oh, oh, I love it. But I wouldn't want to mess it up. I don't know what to do because <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. But I could actually use it. But I don't want to mess it up. Maybe if I use the back? I don't know. It's very cool. Maybe I'll just set it on my shelf. Okay, now onto the book. Okay, the book is Luminous by Mara Rutherford. That's pretty. Oh. Oh, that's pretty. 
says she's hidden her magic for too long. Like that is just ugh, stunning. Okay, and we have a signed book plate and a letter from the author. This says, Dear reader, if you're holding this letter, then somewhere nearby is a copy of my third novel, Luminous, which means you're about to embark on a journey five years in the making. Publishing is a slow, strange business, and this book has had a weirder, a windier path than most. But it's here before you now, and if that isn't proof that magic exists, I'm not sure what is. Luminous is a story of magic, monsters, and misadventures, but it's also the story of the main character, Lyora, finding herself against impossible odds. There may be some kissing, too. I hope when you read it, you're able to forget your own fears for a while, and that when you emerge, things seem a little brighter. Happy reading, my friends, and thank you for being here. The world needs your light. Always, Mara. I said I wasn't going to read uh, about the books if I had a letter from the author, but I'll make an exception if I don't really learn enough about the book. Okay, uh, this says, Her sister has been taken, and the only boy she's ever loved has disappeared. To get them back, she'll have to use the magic she she's always feared. Okay, that's with that and the author's note, that's really all I need. There's much more, but I'm going to leave it at that. Awesome. Okay, so that is everything in that box. Oh, and in our little thing here, besides telling about the spoilers and the photo challenge, there's also journal prompts to find light in the darkness and an easy pumpkin mousse recipe. And then it also... Uh, says the December young adult box will contain an exclusive item inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia. So, what's that? Okay, on to the next box. Okay, this one looks like so. This is the young adult October 2021 box, and the theme is violence. So, we have the normal stuff spoilers, photo challenge. Journal prompts to conquer inner violence and turmoil, and a pumpkin soup recipe. Okay, so we have pumpkin king dip mix. So you can make a dip with this or a bagel spread. Oh, this is a nightmare before Christmas dip. Cute. Then we have something in plastic. Oh, it's a, a headband. It's kind of stretchy. But it's like Ouija board things. But yeah, you tie it around your hair or whatever. Cute. Something in bubble wrap. Oh, and it smells good. Oh, it's a bath bomb slash shower steamer. And it's horror stories. Spooky spices and creepy something. It's kind of a blurred. But it's a cute little pumpkin. Okay, then we have something in a cute little bag here that's got spider webs and spiders all over it. So there's two things in it. One is Iris Hollow Vanilla Darkness Lip Balm. And the other is Poison Apple Roll-On Perfume. Let me show you these. And I need to change out my battery because it's flashing, but... Ooh, I like the smell of that. It does have like an apple smell. Okay, gonna change out my battery and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. While I was swapping out the battery, I went ahead and wrote uh, Unplugged through Instagram and sent them the pictures. And they probably won't get back to me because it's like, I don't know, after nine, I think, at night. So not during like normal business hours or anything. So maybe I'll hear from them tomorrow. Okay, continuing on with the box. We have a candle here. Oh, well, I think it's a candle. It says Midnight Dreary, which is uh, an Edgar Allan Poe reference. Cinnamon, cloves, and spice. Oh, it smells so good. I love these smells. These sweet kind of desserty fall smells. I just, I love them so much. And this candle is black with some black glitter. Okay, then we have something in a box here. 
This is so cute. What is it? It's a Sleepy Hollow bowl. It's just a ceramic bowl and it's so cute. It's a little black pumpkin bowl. How cute is that? I'm gonna like have to find some use for this like on my shelves with like a spooky books or something to put in here. Okay, then we have our book, but it's weird because it's a paperback, which I think all of the YAs are hardcover, so I'm confused. And this is the YA one. It is The Violent Season by Sarah Walters. Very spooky looking. It says, every November the people of... Wait, hold on. Do I have... Yes, okay. I have signed book plate and a letter from the author. This says, Dear reader, I'm so happy to share my debut novel, The Violent Season, with you as a part of this month's Unplugged Book Box. The violent season began with a, feel, a feeling, a chilly, unsettling, unnerving feeling born from isolation. The town of Wolf Ridge was built from this uneasy place as I started writing the initial manuscript during a residency at Vermont Studio Center, an artist and writer's colony in a dreary, nondescript little town in northern Vermont. I wrote the first 20,000 words of the book holed up in my studio overlooking the Gihon River, watching it slowly freeze over as the dark winter days drip quietly by. Eventually, the story moved from a feeling to a question. Do we decide whether to be good or bad? Or does the world we exist inside of step in and decide for us? Is badness built or born? I was grappling with things like personal agency and consent, which I didn't think were being talked enough about in YA novels. I wanted to explore the nuances of consent that weren't strictly black and white and the struggles people face in romantic relationships when one partner uses the other's love as an excuse for hurting them. I hope to write a story that conveyed the real danger of letting these behaviors go unchecked but also highlighted the positive impact just one person can have on a survivor's strength and resilience and their ability to see past the fog of pain and manipulation. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I hope that as you read Wyatt's story and explore the dark corners of Wolf Ridge, you know that even though Wyatt often feels alone in her struggles, you are not. If you or someone you know is struggling with dating, domestic, or sexual violence, please know there are resources and help available. I can't wait for you to wander the eerily quiet streets of Wolf Ridge, to feel that creepy, sinking sensation that someone, or something, is right around the corner waiting for you. It's time to decide for yourself. Is the, real sick, is the sickness real, or do we all carry that angry, violent little flame just waiting to be ignited? Sarah Walters. And there are also uh, resources here for the National Domestic Violence Hotline and loveisrespect.org. I don't know if you can, well, you can look those up if you're interested, but yeah. Okay. So that is everything in that box. Okay, on to the next box. It looks like so. Okay, so this is the September 2021 three year anniversary box. Uh, this is the YA box and the theme was finding your strength. Okay, there is a tiny spoon in this little bag. <laughs> Okay, I just looked it up and it is a Cruel Prince teaspoon. This teaspoon looks as though it were plucked straight from Holly Black's Folk of Air series. Jude is constantly being asked to find her inner strength to survive in a world that is against her. This spoon is from Unplugged. And it's very cool looking. Okay, next up we have a candle, and this is inspired by the Winners Trilogy by Marie Rutowski, and it says Bite and Sting, and this candle is by Natural Pure Honest. Okay, mm, it's like a mix of 
like sweet tarts and soap. That's an interesting smell. It makes me think of like dish detergent. It doesn't tell me like what the scents are. Oh wait, yes it does. Pomegranate, red currant, and cedar. And there's like a little bit of glitter on it. Okay, next up we have an unplugged book box uh, exclusive whipped body frosting infused with botanicals. This is Nina, orange, ginger, and late nights in DC. Criticism is a good thing. It means you fought for something. And this is based on American Royals. Ooh, that smells good. It smells like... I smell orange. Yeah, I definitely smell the orange. That's really like the biggest smell that I smell is the orange. And I love the smell of oranges. Okay, next we have this little baggie. I'm guessing we have straws. Yeah, they all come like in little individual things. But we have three straight straws, three bended straws, and one straw cleaner. It's always handy to have some reusable straws. Okay, next we have Lila's Baked Treats Whipped Sugar Scrub. None. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, my first thought was this smells like chocolate chip cookie dough. And then I see that it looks like there's some chocolate chips in it. Oh my gosh. See, it looks like there's a couple of chocolate chips right there. They might have been on top once upon a time. <laughs> oh, that smells so good. <laughs> I want to eat it. Oh no! The mug is like the handle's broken on the mug. Oh, and this is a really cool looking mug. Cabin three. Oh. I wonder if I can fix it and just set it on my shelf and not actually use it. It's a Percy Jackson inspired mug. It looks like that. It's very shiny and pretty. I'll see what I can do about that. See, at this point, because I'm opening this so late, I, I can't write out. Oh, oh, I can't write unplugged about this box. I could about the other one because it's the, the newest box. Okay, and then we have our book, The City Beautiful by Aiden. Polydoros. On the back it just says unplugged book box. So this must be like an exclusive cover. The book is just black. Wait, hold on. There's two dust jackets. Hold on. So this one is the unplugs and the original was inside it it looks like this but I think I like the unplugged ones better it's pretty cool looking let's see we do have a, a signed book plate which is very cool it looks like it has the characters on it and we have a letter from the author it says dear reader the 1893 World's Fair is about to begin and this book will be your ticket Part its pages and you will travel with Alter from the Columbian Exposition's lavish court of honor to the seedy underbelly of Chicago's Vice District and everywhere in between. This is a book as much about revenge as it is about redemption. It is about rising above the past and really claiming it. And though it is a dark story, it is also a hopeful one. Thank you for reading. 
I'm gonna have to read what this says because I don't really know enough about the book yet. Chicago, 1893. For Alter Rosen, this is the land of opportunity and he dreams of the day he'll have enough money to bring his mother and sister to America, freeing them from the oppression they face in his native Romania. But when Alter's best friend, Yaakov, becomes the latest victim in a long line of murdered Jewish boys, his dream begins to slip away. While the rest of the city is busy celebrating the World's Fair, Alter is now living in a nightmare, possessed by Yaakov's Dybok. He is plunged into a world of corruption and deceit, and thrown back into the arms of a dangerous boy from his past, a boy who means more to Alter than anyone knows. Now with only days to spare until the Dybok takes over Alter's body completely, the two boys must race to track down the killer before the killer claims them next. Interesting. All right. Okay, so that is everything in that box. Only four more boxes to go. So let me kind of clear a little bit of an area. Uh, let me get rid of some of the garbage because I'm running out of room on this bed. And I'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, continuing on. We have the adult October 2021 box. The theme is the walls are closing in and it looks like so. Okay, so we have this interesting um, like felt book sleeve. It is inspired by a Growl and Poe Nevermore. Uh, on the back it says, quote the Raven Nevermore. And we have like a button here. Oh, it has like a little rubber band thing that goes around the button. I am not a fan of these funky felt book sleeves. I'm just not. I'm going to put this back in the plastic and I think I might gift this to somebody. Okay, then we have I don't know what this is from. Oh, it's from Hamlet by William Shakespeare. It says on the box, alas, poor Yorick. And what exactly? Oh, this is cool. It is a skull bottle. It's got like this little stopper on top. I actually have like a, a skull like shot glass kind of thing from them it almost like the same design this is very cool though Ooh, i can fill it with like something white to make it like really look like a skull or something black or red i think that'd be really cool i like that i don't know how well you can see it though because it's clear <laughs> okay then we have a sleepy hollow inspired candle And it has like a little wax pumpkin sitting in here. It says toasted marshmallow and smoldering woods. I get that. I like that smell too. And it's a white candle with a little pumpkin sitting in there. Okay, something a little drawstring baggy. What is this? Okay, so it is this like massaging kind of soap bar it's hollows eve soap olive oil safflower oil organic coconut oil glycerin purified water lye sugar oat milk and oat protein bergamot juniper cedar wood and fern needle and cardamom essential oils blend it's, it smells good okay this next thing is inspired by mexican gothic and it's nomi Tonka Current Red Wine and Secrets Room and Linen Spray. One could construct a hundred different narratives. It didn't make them true. Ooh, that smells really nice. I like how that smells. Okay, then we have something in a box here. There's no label on it. I see a screw and an anchor. What in the world is this? 
Death is a mystery and burial is a secret. Oh, it's like a, you can hang, I don't know, your keys or something on it. And it's got like a little hang up thing on the back. Pet cemetery wall hook. It says it's perfect to hang keys or clothes. If you can hold a jacket or something like that, this might be a cool thing to like hang up in Xander's room for him to like hang his jacket or his hoodie on or something. And then we have our book. So I got the book out and I started telling you about it and then my SD card filled up. So <laughs> here it is. The book is The Summoning by J.P. Smith. And we have a signed book plate. And the letter from the author says, Dear reader, thank you for your interest in the summoning. Ever since I became a full-time writer many years ago, I've been thinking about writing about a medium. Two movies had stayed with me before then. Seance on a wet afternoon and Don't Look Now. I think what I appreciated about both was how the audience sees how thin the tissue is between life and death. How easily some can see and communicate with those they've lost. How readily others can be, can be convinced that there is life after death. My main character, Kit Capriol, not only makes desperately needed money from donations to help defray medical costs for her daughter, but because of her acting skills, she also brings genuine comfort to her clients. And then, one day, a man starts chatting with her at a bar and speaks of his wife's recent death. She thinks she has a new client until she discovers he's a detective with the NYPD and that she's being investigated. What I most enjoyed in writing this was in developing the character of Kit Capriol. The reader is never quite sure what to make of her. Is she a con artist who brings genuine comfort to the bereaved? Or is she honestly in touch with the dead? There are a few other possibilities for her motivation, but I'll leave that up to you. So I hope you enjoy the summoning. The ghosts are out there this autumn. They're there. You just have to look for them. Hope you enjoy JP. And then in addition to the normal stuff, we also have journal prompts for when you're overwhelmed and a poison apple cocktail recipe. Okay, so that is everything in that box. Let me grab the next box and we will see what's inside. Okay, inside this one we have the Come As You Are August 2021 Adult Fiction Box. Let's move Ooh, some of these worms out of the way so you can actually get a peek into the box. Okay, so our pen is inspired by Bridgerton and it says, I burn for you. Oh, then we have this really cool clear bookmark. It says, all that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wonder are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. J.R.R. Tolkien. And it's this cool, like, acrylic bookmark. I really like that. Okay, this next thing is inspired by Black Sun. It is a celestial facial elixir zalia ingredients grapefruit and pumpkin extract stone crop oil moon water comfrey leaf lavender and diluted isopropyl and yeah there's like like seeds and stuff floating around in there and actual like leaves and such i wonder how it smells smells kind of potent and herby. Okay, I'm not going to lay that on the pad just in case it leaks. It was wrapped in plastic to make sure it didn't get on everything. Okay, then we have whatever's in this big box here. Oh, I freaking love it. Okay, so we have like this mason jar cup. It should have like a hole for a straw, but it's a mason jar and it's from Alice in Wonderland. So on one side, we have like Alice holding one of the flamingos and the white rabbit. And on the other side, we have the Mad Hatter and it says, drink me. And I don't know how well you can see because 
the glass. But cool. And that's not all that came in that box. We also have, uh, this is Friends Inspired, Central Perk Cold Brew Coffee. Awesome. I don't know how to cold brew. <laughs> I need to figure that out. But yay. I love this. I love the Alice in Wonderland. Oh, inspired stuff. Okay, then we also have a Friends Inspired Coffee Scoop. And it says coffee and friends. And I don't know how well. There you go. And on the bottom, it's a clip to hold your coffee closed. That's very, very cool. Then we have Beach Read inspired lip balm. This has coconut and lemongrass. Okay, and then we have our book. Okay, so this is another one of those that has like two covers so there's the original cover and then on top of that is the unplugs like their cover uh, so this is she who became the sun by shelly parker chan and this is what the unplug cover looks like the book is just yellow and here is what the original cover looks like i don't know which one i like more I kind of like the unplugged one more. On the back of the unplugged one it says, I refuse to be nothing. We also have a signed book plate and a letter from the author. Dear unplugged reader, I wrote She Who Became the Sun because I could never find what I wanted in a bookstore. An English language version of one of those delicious hyper emotional Chinese historical TV dramas that's full of revenge and star-crossed romance, armored women and beautiful men, and ruthless ambition for the throne. The kind you can't stop watching even though it's 80 episodes long and you're totally going to regret it at work tomorrow, but one in which the queers win. When I moved to Asia after an Australian childhood where nary an Asian ever graced the big or small screens, except Keanu, bless you Keanu, I became obsessed with those dramas and how they presented Asian-ness and often the female gaze as the default. I wanted to capture the joy of that immersive escapism, a world in which no single character carries the burden of representation so we can know each of them as simply themselves. At the same time, because I grew up loving Greek mythology, Arthurian legend, Star Wars, and Marvel movies, I wanted to include those influences too making She Who Became the Sun a glorious Eastern-Western mashup that reflects my own identity as a mixed-race member of the Chinese diaspora. diaspora. I had great fun playing with familiar character archetypes such as the trickster hero, nor noble warrior prince, and devious scholar, and I had even more fun subverting that familiarity by making all of them some shade of queer or gender nonconforming. Underneath the moments of fist-pumping triumph and romantic yearning, I hope you find a fierce story about the poisonous constraints of gender and the power of creating your own identity. This story says, come as you are, be so deeply un and unashamedly yourself that those who would deny you have no choice but to take heed. Because when we're the people we are meant to be, we can change the world. Shelley. I love that and I'm excited to read this. Okay, so that is everything in that box. On to the next box. Okay, this one is the September 2021 Adult Fiction Box Three Year Anniversary. Let's move. Okay, so in this one we have Cozy Autumn Reading Blend Pumpkin Chai Latte. Yum. Okay, so we have a Discovery of Witches Bowl. This says, just because something seems impossible doesn't make it untrue. And that is really cute. And we also have a spoon to go with it. So for a little bowl of soup. So cute. Okay, then we've got Bee's Hair Rinse, Mango, and Runaways. 
what? One to Watch Hair Cleanser. Uh, One to Watch by Kate Stamen London features B, a plus size fashion blogger who is sick of the lack of body diversity on some of her favorite shows. She must push through criticism to show off what she's got with her fashion skills. This hair rinse is an unplugged exclusive. Okay. So a shampoo? <laughs> Interesting. I don't think we've ever gotten a shampoo before. Oh, it smells nice. It smells really nice. Fruity. Alright, then we've got a Lestat de Lion Court candle, which is Interview with a Vampire. And I'm looking for what scents, and it doesn't say. Oh, wait, maybe it says on top. Bourbon, Spice, and Blood. So the candle looks like this. Ooh. There's like a red stone or something inside it. And it smells quite fruity. I guess blood is supposed to be fruity. <laughs> and there's some red glitter on it. it smells it smells like sweet tarts. And then we have something in this little baggie. Oh, I've gotten something like this before and I really like them. I don't even know where they disappeared to, but I wore them a lot. They're little hair clips, but they look like hands, like little skeleton hands. And these are all sparkly with little black fingernails. Cute. I used to wear them quite a bit in my hair. <laughs> and then we have Cove, 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 I don't know how to say this. K-V-O-T-H-E apostrophe S. Magic. <laughs> Magical Journeys and Spices Bath Bomb. Okay, so this is the Name of the Wind inspired bath bomb. And it's like wrapped in plastic and then inside this little plastic thing. So it's really hard to smell. And then we have our book. And that is The Night We Burned by S.F. Kosa. And we have a signed book plate. And a letter from the author. We all have things in our past that we're not proud of. Memories that twist us up. For some, it's small stuff. A clumsy remark at a party that still makes you cringe when you think of it. Or a fight with a loved one where you said some things you regret to this day. Some of us, though, have made mistakes that reverberate through the years. Things we wish we could bury forever. How do we deal with the recollections that cause us shame and hurt? Some of us tell ourselves stories. It wasn't really that bad. Our intentions were good, right? Or we work very hard at forgetting. As soon as the memories try to crawl up from the basement of our minds, we kick them back down the stairs and slam the door shut again. In the night we burned, Dora Rodriguez goes a step further. She thinks her past is safely locked away, but very few who know her then are alive to tell tales. She's built herself a nice quiet life as a fact checker at an online news magazine devoted to accuracy. Truth and objectivity are literally her job. These things, right down to the most basic and boring facts, are particularly important to her because long ago, she was involved in a cult that warped her understanding of the world and made her question the truth of what she was seeing with her own eyes. So what does she do when a colleague decides to report on a murder that could be linked to the cult and her own actions 20 years ago when it all went up in flames? Avoiding and forgetting the past are no longer options for her. Dora decides the only way she can save herself is to alter history. She sets out to help the journalist uncover the story while strategically doctoring facts that might connect her to the night everything turned to ash. Thing is, it's much harder to escape the past than you might think. It leaves its evidence everywhere. It writes its story not only on our minds but on our bodies. It changes the lens through which we see the world and how the world sees us. And for Dora, it turns out it's actually hunting her down. The question is whether she'll have the courage and strength to rise from those ashes and face her memories in time to save herself and the people she loves. I loved writing this novel about truth, memories, and the reasons why people try to rewrite their stories to escape the past. I hope you enjoy reading it. Interesting. Okay, so that is everything in that box. Now on to our final box. Okay, 
opening this one up. Looks like so. This is the August 2021 Young Adult Fiction Box and the theme was Something Wicked This Way Comes. It looks like so. Okay, right off the bat, there is something strange in this bag. Okay, <laughs> I had to look at the card to see what exactly this is. So we have this little glass bottle and you can, it's actually an essential oil diffuser. This stunning glass diffuser will add flair wherever you hang it up. Drop a few, drop a few drops inside to add fragrance to your car or room. So you can like, tie this up somewhere. And the other thing that was in there is the the Raven Cycle essential oils. In Maggie Steve Otter's books, Gansey and the others are facing some wicked forces. It seems like trouble always finds them, but they learn to face it in their own ways. This is an exclusive peppermint essential oil to be paired with your diffuser. And it's called Gansey. That is a very potent smell. Like, I didn't smell it at all. But it's weird. It doesn't smell like peppermint to me. I'm not really sure what it smells like. Okay, so we have this cute little cauldron bath bomb. This says, Witches steeped in gold cauldron bath bomb with surprise inside. Something wicked is coming for the two witches in Siannan Smart's novel. Despite their differences, they must face the evil together. This exclusive bath bomb is by Sudsy Duck Soapery and it contains an exciting surprise inside. Fun. Then we have a Percy Jackson inspired pen. So we have this really cool uh, Edgar Allan Poe inspired. Uh, it is a hot and cold rice pack. So you can stick it in the freezer or in the microwave. And it says, Nevermore. And it does, well, it has a scent, but it's not like essential oils or anything. It just, it smells like rice. But I really like that. So it looks like this on the front and on the back, it's just this really soft black, um, almost like t-shirt material. Okay, so this is Sophia's Heal Balm for recovery after the annual ball. Oh, this is inspired by Cinderella is Dead. So I think this is like for dry cracked feet or something. Or maybe it's for sore feet. I'm not sure. But that's cool. Then we have a face cleanser. This is called Sydney. And it's grapefruit and graveyard dirt. Okay. And it, I don't know if it's just the bottle or the stuff inside, but it's very red. <laughs> And let's see. Oh, this is inspired by Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Okay, it's not the bottle. I mean, it's the bottle that's red, not the stuff. Oh, that smells really nice. That's the grapefruit. I don't smell any graveyard dirt. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, and then finally we have our book. This is the last thing in the box. Well, and our sign book plate and stuff. Okay, this is another one that Unplugged did their on cover and put it on top of the other one. Uh, the book is Mark of the Wicked by Georgia Bowers. And this is what their cover looks like. And the back says, Magic always leaves its mark. Okay, let's see what the... This is what the book looks like. And this is what the original cover looks like. I don't know which one I like better. Ah, this one's tough. It looks like there's some wolves on here. And there's also a skeleton cat. Interesting. Which cover do you like better? Comment down below and let me know. I can't decide. Okay, so we have our signed book plate. And then the letter from the author it says, when I was young, my family was driving past a wooded area near where I grew up. My mom turned and looked at me from the passenger seat, glanced at the woods, then said, this is where the witches meet. 
she held my gaze for a few seconds, then turned back round, probably knowing full well that she'd sparked an interest that I'd never, ever shake. I stared out the window as the trees rushed by, my mind shooting off questions. Who were these witches? What were they doing? Why were they meeting? What did they look like? Were they good witches, like Mildred Hubble? Or were they bad and green, like the Wicked Witch of the West? I was hooked. Fast forward many years, and while surrounded by books as a librarian, I decided, I decided to start writing my own. I'd written a few that hadn't gotten anywhere when I came across a short story competition on the theme of Bewitched. My story didn't win, but I couldn't stop thinking about this witch who carries the pain of what she'd done to others on her face. Not willing to let her go, I took myself back to that magical moment in the car and built a world around those witches my mom had alluded to, giving them family, friends, desires, worries, and for Matilda, a pet goat named Victor. There's a specific scene between Matilda, her mother, and her grandmother when they're in the woods together in the dead of the night with only nocturnal animals witnessing the secrets of this family of witches. It's not a big scene, but it's one of my favorites in the book. When I fleshed out Matilda's story, I knew it needed to be a set during the run up to Halloween. Autumn is my absolute favorite time of year. There's something magical about the leaves curling and falling to the ground and the dark nights when everyone's tucked up in their beds. Well, almost everyone. Some feel they're most energized under the light of the full moon. Halloween is a special time for Matilda and her family, a powerful time where you can taste the possibility of magic on the tip of your tongue, and a countdown to All Hallows' Eve seemed only natural. So in my heart, it's Halloween, and when you read this, I hope you'll curl up with a blanket and a hot chocolate while a complicated witch leads you into her world of spells and charms. And next time you're walking through the woods, take a moment to wonder if this is where the witches meet. Thank you for reading Georgia Bowers. Oh, I'm interested. Okay, so that is everything out of all of 11 boxes that I had here. So I think the books that I'm most excited for would be Luminous, Mark of the Wicked and She Who Became the Sun. And as far as my favorite non-book item, oh my goodness, that is, that's hard. I think maybe I would have to go with the Alice in Wonderland mason jar because that was just, that was really cool. <laughs> and I love Alice in Wonderland. So what were your favorites? Have you read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!